We have one of the most well-known and successful people in the history of journalism, uh, the uh, writer of several best-selling books uh, of Washington Post fame, of Watergate fame, Bob Woodward. Bob, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. How are you, Fred? I'm doing well. It's hard yeah. hard to believe we go back, uh, what, 35 years? Yeah, or so. I think we were, uh, We I was covering and you were working in the Coolidge administration, I was, wasn't it? I was 12 and, and, and you were 11, I think, uh, at the no, time. It goes back to Watergate and Nixon. I, uh, I'm a little bit resentful you have kept, looks like, all of your hair, but uh, other than that, I'm uh, still following you uh, uh, very, very closely, and I want to get right in to uh, this uh, uh, very important story that uh, you recently broke concerning uh, the request of uh, our leader in Afghanistan, General McChrystal, uh, of, uh, of additional troops and the ominous warnings that uh, he had in that recommendation. Uh, as to what would happen if we did not get additional troops there. Uh, Bob, I, I, let me just ask you kind of an open-ended uh, question, and, and that is what do you think the significance uh, of, uh, of this is? It, it seems like that it's brought many things to a head, from yes, where we I go think. from here, military versus civilian, um, uh, conflict perhaps within the administration. What's the significance of the story? Well, it, it's a piece of the puzzle and maybe a significant piece of the puzzle because uh, it was known he had sent in an assessment, but it was classified. And uh, it turns out uh, uh, I was able to get it and uh, read it. And it's not just that he says things are serious. Uh, he says he needs more troops in a year or there is likely failure. Now, as best I can tell, I was talking to some people who have been defense secretary uh, recently, and they said they cannot recall any instance of a general essentially saying, I've got to have these troops or we fail. Uh, so McChrystal is laying down a very strong marker. I think the significance is this McChrystal, as you may recall, they fired General McKiernan, mm -hmm. the predecessor, and this was the guy. This is Obama's guy. This is his guy. The, uh, Gates picked him. Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, was instrumental in, in getting this job for, uh, for McChrystal. So... He supposedly has total support. Uh, in March, there was a strategy laid out, uh, namely counterinsurgency and uh, Obama's, you know, unflinching declaration recently that this is a war of necessity. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, if I may say, the president's credit, he is looking at the whole picture because the circumstances have changed very significantly on the ground is the uh, confidential report shows uh, the Taliban is doing better and better the August 20th election uh, has really not been settled so it's not clear whether there's going to be an, a legitimate government uh, there and a, a factor that people uh, kind of have not focused on in Pakistan the army there, the Pakistani mm -hmm. army, mm -hmm. has had some real impressive successes against the Taliban in these ungovernable areas of Pakistan. So given that radical a change, it's reasonable to look at everything from the bottom up at the same time. I think uh, you've got to do it fast. I've been to Afghanistan. I, it, it, you, you, when you were in the Senate, you used to make these trips. Mm -hmm. and, I've been there. And you, it's a very humbling experience. Uh, very so depressing experience. Yeah. And uh, you, you realize that we have these kids out there in the desert where it's 116 degrees, have we given them everything they need, the proper strategy, the proper backup, uh, the, the proper support from the president and the Congress and the public? And the answer in this case is uh, it's up in the air. It's in flux. And uh, imagine if you and I were, you know, private first class Woodward and Captain uh, Fred Thompson sitting out there and we're saying, 
hey, what are we supposed to be doing? Who's supporting us? Where does all this go? You got to decide. And now we see, now we read stories like today where our new strategy of trying to protect the uh, uh, Afghanis are actually costing us uh, U.S. soldiers' lives. Uh, so it just adds to the complexity. Let me ask you this, uh, Bob. Let's let's assume for a minute that those changes have taken place so dramatically uh, from March 27 when the president laid down uh, his new uh, strategy and said at that time that it was at the conclusion of a careful policy review. Um, and uh, uh, does, 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 the mili- does the military support what McChrystal is doing? And, and does the military think that uh, that that they can win under any circumstances. Well, uh, first of all, the military, uh, as we know, is not monolithic. Sure. Uh, they're they're people who have different attitudes. But mm-hmm. the the key people uh, in the military, General Petraeus, who is the central commander who oversees both the war in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, have made it clear they support. Um, a crystal. It's it's unclear where uh, Secretary Gates is, where the president is, where General Jones, the national security advisor, is, where some of the other people. But the people in the field are closest to the field. Right. Uh, so seem to support him. Let me ask you this: it, Do you? They do, but it, I, you know, there's a real. I, I I'm deep into the woods on yeah. this, Fred, and yeah. uh, there is a, an argument that uh, we don't need to transform Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, we're going to get into nation building. We're already into it. The goal here is to keep al-Qaeda from attacking the United States. And the, there, there may be another level, actually a lower level of troops uh, that we could have in Afghanistan and indeed prevent the ta- the Taliban from taking don't, over an al-Qaeda movement. Don't in. you guess, if, if uh, or, or maybe you have more than a guess, that that's where the president is going to come out, split the difference on this between what McChrystal is asking for and nothing? Um, you know, that often happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a lot of people are going to argue uh, that's... Uh, the problem we had in Vietnam, that's the problem we had in Iraq for a long time. Incrementalism. Uh, yes, that we, uh, it's the problem of the invasion of Iraq, you know, it's pretty much agreed, at least by lots of people uh, who know a lot about it, that we didn't have enough force there to really stabilize the country early on. Let me ask, let, let me ask you this. The, the the media now seems to be playing this the last 24 hours as a big Biden uh, victory uh, that uh, that his uh, his his thoughts and uh, his opinions on these things now are taking precedence say over Secretary of State Clinton uh, for example do you hear any of those rumblings um, well yes I mean uh, Biden has been an advocate of uh, for less force, and that we do a counterinsurgency strategy, but but um, make sure that we hold Afghanistan and that we keep Al Qaeda out. And there is an argument that you can do that with less force. You will not then not be in a classic counterinsurgency war where you are sending troops out to protect the population, okay. to nation Bob, build. Bob, let me ask you this. This is as much of a historic, you're not that old, but as a, as a person who's seen a lot of history in this town, can you argue with the case that would, would, would go like this, that never before have we ever had a situation with this kind of public opinion where it is today on this issue, with this kind of withering of support already in the United States uh, Congress, uh, where we saw it through, and well, that it's just a matter of time. Well, that, but see, that could be a, a real long time, as as you know. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, in the Johnson years and the Nixon years, the public and the Congress turned against the war, and the president wasn't for a while. On. Wasn't for a while. It seems to me like this is. Uh, you remember better than I do. It seems to me like this is quicker on us, uh, and a pres- the president's own party well, is quicker than back in those days. Well, it, you know, there, 
that may be true, um, and but the the context is the Iraq War, where you know there was so much opposition. It seems to have stabilized. I emphasize seemed, but here, if, if I could just offer a stray thought uh, as mm-hmm. a journalist, the the issue for me, I'm working on a book on Obama. Mm-hmm. When I got this report, I read it and I realized this will be overtaken by events when my book right. comes out next year. This is exactly what the public needs to know. That document, uh, when we published it with very minor redi- redactions, reasonably right. And civilly requested I by read, read the that, Pentagon. Read that. Uh, uh, that you know, it's three weeks old. The Pentagon Papers uh, came out, uh, as I say, eight years too late. We need to know these things now, uh, so the debate can. And you said at the beginning, does this bring something like this to a head? Uh, maybe it does. And and I think whatever side you might be on, that's exactly what. We need uh, th- those. You you can't let this delay. This is not a health care debate, with all due respect to it. This is about people's lives. Well, it's uh, it's it's funny our priorities uh, because I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Bob Woodward, another huge story. 